This is Ray Bradbury. Join me for the next 30 minutes on a tour through time and space. Come along to the far future. Follow me into a strange past with stories that almost could be or might have been. Real or unreal, this is Bradbury 13. There were fireworks the very first night. Things that you should be afraid of, perhaps. For they might remind you of other more horrible things, but these were beautiful rockets that ascended into the ancient soft air of Mexico and shook the stars apart in blue and white fragments. Everything was good and sweet. The air was that blend of the dead and the living of the rains and the dusts. And in the shadows with bottles of assorted liquor at his elbow. The man in the Panama hat lit a Turkish cigarette and stared into the crowd, searching, searching. Ray Bradbury's The Fox in the Forest. Pablo! Pablo! Mira los cohetes! Llama a tu mamá y a tu hermana y diles que salgan y que vengan a ver. Oh, oh Bill, isn't it wonderful? Well, they sure know how to celebrate, guys. Whoever here. thought they did this back in 1938? Yes, 1938. It's a good year for fireworks and tequila. Have some more. No, I've had too much already. Here come the paper mache balls. Look. <laughs> I've never enjoyed myself so much in my life. It's amazing. It will go on, won't it? Sure, all night probably. No, I mean our trip. Of course it will. I've got enough traveler's checks for a lifetime in Mexico. Enjoy yourself. Don't worry about it. They could find us. Forget it, Susan. They won't find us here. Never? Never. Look, they killed a bull. Let's take a look at him. Bill, that man in the cafe. What about him? I saw him in the plaza this morning. Take it easy. He's nobody. But he was in the hall last night when we went to our room. Don't look back. Keep walking. Examine the paper mache bull here. That's it. Do you think he's from the searchers? Uh, they couldn't follow us. We were too careful. What if they did? What if he followed us back through 200 years? Watch yourself. Keep looking at the bull. You'll be all right. I need to sit down. Not out here. Let's go in the cafe and drink right in front of him. So if he is what we think he is, he won't suspect a thing. No, I can't. We've got to. We're now inside. <laughs> and so I said to David, without well, that's Thank ridiculous. You know. We're here. Who are we? Where are we going? My name is Anne Kristen. My husband's is Roger. We lived in the year 2155 AD in a world that was evil. A world that was like a great black ship pulling away from the shore of sanity and civilization, roaring its black horn in the night, taking two billion people with it, whether they wanted to go or not, to death. To fall over the edge of the earth and the sea in radioactive flame and madness. And then one blue April morning, the phone call. Hello? Hi, Anne. This is Renee. Hey, have you heard? Heard? I mean about Travel and Time Incorporated. Trips to Rome in 21 BC, to Napoleon's Waterloo, any time, any place. Renee, you're joking. No, I'm not. Clinton Smith left this morning for Philadelphia in 1776. Time travel arranges everything. Oh, it costs a lot, but just think. To actually see the burning of Rome, Kubla Khan, Moses in the Red Sea. But how did you hear about it? It came over the screen this morning. Let me check. Renee, it's on right now. Listen. Wright Brothers and Kitty 
Seahawk. Travel in Time Incorporated can costume you, put you in a crowd during the assassination of Lincoln or Caesar. We guarantee to teach you any language you need to move freely in any civilization, in any year, any era without detection. Latin, Greek, ancient American colloquial. Take your vacation in time as well as place. For information on this exciting new... Oh, content, Renee, it sounds wonderful. Tom and I leave for fourteen ninety two tomorrow. They're arranging for us to sail with Columbus. Oh, isn't it amazing? It's unbelievable. What does the government say about this time machine company? Oh, the police have an eye on it. Afraid some people might evade the draft and run off and hide in the past. Everyone has to leave a security bond behind. You know, his house, his belongings, to guarantee return. After all, the war's on. Yes. They won't let anyone forget the war. Anyway, when I heard about this travel in time, I called Tom up at the office and told him all about it, and he was as amazed as I was. Here was the chance that Roger and I had talked and prayed about for so many years, to run away from his work at the bomb factory and from mine at the disease culture unit, to run for centuries into a wild country of years where they will never find us and bring us back to burn our books, scald our minds with fear. So we ran, my husband and I. Roger. Roger Kristen. Anne. Roger Kristen. Anne. Anne. Roger Kristen. Mr. Roger Kristen, isn't it? I'm afraid you're mistaken. Mr. Kristen, you did not pull your pant legs up before you sat down. You've got the wrong person. My name's not Christler. Kristen. I'm William Travis, and I don't see what my pant legs have to do with you, Mr. Uh... Sims. May I sit down? Well... Let me apologize. I thought I knew you because you did not pull your trousers up. Everyone does. If you don't, the trousers bag quickly. Very interesting, Mr. Sims. I'm a long way from home, Mr. Travis. And in need of company. Mr. Sims, we appreciate your predicament, but, well, we're tired and about ready to head for our room. We're leaving for Acapulco in the morning. Oh, charming spot. I was just there, looking for some friends of mine. Oh? And did you find them? No, I'm afraid not. But I will. Oh, is your wife feeling ill? Oh, it's nothing. Well, good night, Mr. Sims. Come on, Susan. Oh, good night. Oh, just one other thing. Yes, Mr. Sims? 2155 A.D. Him sitting there looking us up and down like like animals. Smoking his cigarettes, drinking his drinks. I should have killed him then. Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just upset. Look, why don't you lie down? I'll get you something to drink. I even had the nerve to use his real name on us. Sims, the chief of the searchers. They must really want us bad if they sent him here. Here, drink this. Thank you. And that thing about my pant legs. I knew I should have pulled them up when I sat down. It's, uh, it's an automatic gesture in this day and age. When I didn't do it, it made him think, now here's a man who never wore pants. A man used to breach uniforms and future styles. Oh, I could kill myself for giving us away. No, no, it was my walk. These high heels that did it. And our haircut, so new, so fresh. Everything about us is odd, different, and the way we drink liquor. Anyone could tell we're not used to that. L liquor and cigarettes. Everything we can't get in the future. It gave him away, too. Did you see all the bottles on the table he was sitting at? He's still testing us. He's not positive of us, not, not completely. Well, we can't run out now. We'll have to go to Acapulco leisurely. Maybe he is sure of us, but he's just playing. No, I wouldn't put it past him. He's got all the time in the world. Well, he could dally here for weeks and bring us back to the future 60 seconds after we left it. He might keep us wondering for days, laughing at us. They won't make a scene, will they? No, no, no they wouldn't dare. Their only chance is to get us alone in front of that travel machine. We'll stay in crowds, then. We'll never be alone. 
We'll make a million friends, visit markets. We could pay the chief of police to protect us until we find a way to get rid of Sims and escape. We could change our clothes and disguise ourselves as Mexicans, even... Had to be him. He's gone now. They're still celebrating down there. Mm, probably all night. Bill, that building in the plaza. What building? That one, that big one. What is it? Yeah, that's a, it's a church. I thought so. I've often wondered what a church looked like. It's been a long time since anyone saw one. Would you like to visit it tomorrow? Could we? I'd really like that. Sure. First thing after breakfast. Well, oh, come on. Let's get some sleep. Susan, leave it. Susan? Hello? The rabbits may hide in the forest. But a fox can always find them. Susan, what is it? It was... Sims. Never mind. Go to sleep. Susan, Susan, wake up, wake up. Oh, Bill, I was dreaming. I know, I know. But we're here now, not there. Go to sleep. Senor, your breakfast. Thank you. Ooh, I hope these eggs are as good as they smell. It still amazes me. Fresh ham and eggs anytime you want them. Sounds like a traffic jam out there. Wonder what it is. Oh, senor, you have not heard? An American motion picture company is here making a movie on location. A movie, huh? Sounds interesting. Let's watch them. What do you say? Well... Come on, let's watch them film. Get our minds off everything. They say primitive filmmaking was really something. We can go to Acapulco later, okay? Sure, why not? So here comes Sims down the stairs. Smile at him. That's right. Oh, he can't do anything with all these people around. That's right. He can't, can he? Of course not. Look, here come the actors. Yeah, I could hire two of them, dress them up in our clothes, have them drive off in our car, and let Sims follow them. While he's chasing them, we could make it to Mexico City. Take him years to find us there. Do you think we could? Watch it. Hey, American tourists, I'm so sick of seeing Mexicans I can kiss you. Come and eat with us. Well, come we, on. Uh, misery loves company. I'm Misery, and this is Miss Gloom. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and Mr. and Mrs. Boy, do we hate in Mexico. We all hate it. But we're here doing some preliminary shots for a film. Oh, I see. Yeah, the rest of the crew gets here tomorrow. My name's Joe Melton, the director of this epic. How do you do? I'm uh, uh, Bill Travis. This is my wife, Sue. Glad to meet you. Boy, ain't this a country? Funerals in the streets and people dying. Come on, move over. Cheer us up. <laughs> sure, we've got room. Bill, here comes Sims. Who's Sims? Mr. and Mrs. Travis. 
I thought we were breakfasting together, alone. Sorry. Sit down, pal. Any friend of theirs is a pal of mine. <laughs> Thank you, mister. Melton. Joe Melton. Hey, waiter, how about some service? Hey, waiter. I hope you slept well, Mr. Travis. Did you? I'm not used to spring mattresses. But there are compensations. I stayed up half the night trying new cigarettes and foods. Oh? Yes. Fascinating. A whole new spectrum of sensations, these ancient vices. Ancient vices? What do you mean? <laughs> Always play acting. It's no use. Nor is the stratagem of crowds. I'll get you alone soon enough. I'm immensely patient. So. Say, is this guy giving you any trouble? No, it's, uh, it's all right. Say the word and I'll give him the bum's rush. Hey, waiter, I'm starving. See, si, yellow thing. Let's come to the point, Mr. Travis. It took me a month of tracing you through towns and cities once you left New York, and all of yesterday to be sure of you. If you come with me quietly, I might be able to get you off with no punishment, if you agree to go back and work on the bomb. This guy's a real talker, ain't he? Think it over, Mr. Travis. You can't escape. You don't know what you're talking about. Stop it. Use your intelligence. You know we can't let you get away. Other people might get the same idea. We need people. To fight your wars? Bill. It's all right, Susan. We'll talk on his terms now. Excellent. Really, you've both been incredibly romantic running away from your responsibilities. Running away from horror. Nonsense. Only a war. Wait a minute. What are you guys talking about? Only a war? Half the world dead of disease bombs? Nevertheless, the inhabitants of the future resent you two hiding out here. Dying people love to know that others die with them. Death loves death, not life. Well, not us, Sims. The longer you keep me waiting, the harder it will go for you. We need you on the bomb project. Return now, no unpleasantness. If you wait, we'll force you to work. Then we'll try a few disease cultures on you, Mr. Travis. I, I have a proposition. I'll come back with you, if my wife stays here. Bill! That's, that's my offer. All right. Meet me in the plaza in ten minutes. I'll be sitting on the bench by the tree. Pick me up in your car and we'll drive to a deserted spot. And have the travel machine pick us up there. Bill! It's all right, Susan. It's settled. One last thing, Sims. Last night you could have gotten in our room and kidnapped us, but, but you didn't. Shall we say I was enjoying myself? I hate the thought of giving up this wonderful atmosphere, this vacation. I shall regret leaving it all behind. The plaza, then. In ten minutes. Your wife will be safe here, and may stay as long as she wishes. Say your goodbyes. <laughs> there goes Mr. Big Talk. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Big Talk. Susan, wait for me on the balcony. But I, I, I can't explain. Just wait for me. You'll be all right. Trust me. Hey, where are you two going? Hey! <laughs> Hmm. 10.30. Come on, Mr. Christian. I mean, Mr. Travis. You've got a date with a bomb. Good. Right on time. <laughs> this was easier than I thought. What? He's crazy. No, 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 no! Adios, senor. Will they want to see you again? No, no, we, we went over it and over it. it. It was an accident. I lost control of the car. Oh, I wept for him. I hated to kill him. I've never wanted to do anything like that in my life. They won't prosecute you? No, they talked about it, but no, I, I talked faster. It was an accident. It's over. Where will we go? Mexico City? Cars in the repair shop. We'll be ready at four this afternoon, then we'll, we'll get in it and go. Will we be followed? 
Maybe Sims wasn't alone. Well, at least we'll have a little head start on them anyway. Hey, Bill, Susan. Oh, uh, hi, Joe. I heard what happened today. That's a rotten shame. You okay? No, I'll be fine. Well, you ought to get your minds off it. We're doing some shooting up the street here. Come on up and watch. It'll do you good. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Oh, you ought to see me work, Bill. It's really something. Honey? <sighs> sure, we'll, we'll be glad to. Great. I'll see you in a minute. All right, back to work, everyone. Hey, Jack, kill that light up there, will you? Do you uh, see anyone suspicious? No. I don't know. What time is it? Three o'clock. Car should be ready soon. Well, let's watch Melton filming for a while, and we'll get back to the hotel and pack. Come on. Okay, let's start up this other shot. Get a move on. Boy, what a day, huh? Hey, Bill Sue, what do you think of that scene we shot? It was fine. Fine? It was a Rembrandt. What do you mean, fine? You folks go hamster. Oh, we've got to pack. Our car's almost ready. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm parched. Come on up to my room for a drink. What do you say? Well, maybe one. Great. Come on, everyone. The drinks are on me. Watch the time. Let me know when it's four. Come on in, you two. What do you have? Martini? Beer? How about some champagne? Sounds wonderful. You got it, pretty gal. Here we go, Bill, Susan, bottoms up. Cheers. Hey, hey, no long faces. Drink up. Here's to a very beautiful lady, lovely enough for films. I might even give you a test. Uh -huh. I mean it. I can make you a star. And take us to Hollywood? Well, of course. Get out of Mexico for good. Hey, wouldn't she be a knockout? Could be just what we're looking for. A little change in our lives. Sure. Have some more champagne. Sounds too good to be true. Let me refill that, Bill. Well, what kind of film would my wife be good for? Well, I'd like to do a story of suspense. Really? Absolutely. A story of a man and wife, like yourselves. Go on. Sort of a war story, maybe. A story of a couple who live in a little house on a little street. In the year 2155, maybe. This is ad lib, you understand, but, but this man and wife are faced with a terrible war. Super plus neutron bombs, uh, censorship, death. And here's the gimmick. They escape into the past, followed by a man they think is evil, but who's only trying to show them what their duty is. You dropped your glass, Bill. But you must hear the rest of the plot. This couple take refuge with a group of film people whom they learn to trust. Safety in numbers, they say to themselves. Ah, that's a fine wine, don't you think? Well, this man and woman, it seems, don't realize how important they are to the future. The man, especially, is the keystone to a new bomb metal. So the searchers, let's call them, spare no trouble or expense to find them and take them home. Once they get them totally alone in a hotel room where no one can see. Strategy, Bill. Strategy. The searchers work alone or in groups of eight. One trick or another will do it. Don't you think it will make a wonderful film, Susan? Don't you, Bill? Thank you. A gun. Stay back. Get him. That was a stupid move, Mr. Christian. You only made matters worse. Someone's coming. Let me in. Open the door. The manager. Give up, Melton. It's too late. Nonsense. We've got all the time in the world. Switch on the camera. The camera. Bill, the machine's in the camera. I forgot you think. Say goodbye to Mexico, Mr. and Mrs. Kristen. No. Let me in. Open the door. Quickly, 
Oh, Santa Maria, we must summon the priest and have him sprinkle the room with holy water and give it his blessing. What should we do with this? What is it? Bottles and bottles. Cognac, vermouth, tequila, and turkey cigarettes, and hundreds of cigars. Throw them out. Throw them out. 